I want to get your take on what Francis uh, Hagen has said. Is it true that Facebook uses these algorithms that push inflammatory content because that drives more clicks and engagement? It is not true. And I want to say, I think there have been a lot of mischaracterizations today about uh, what those stolen documents say and about the work that we are doing to keep Facebook safe. I've but but company, just so I'm clear, just I just want to be clear, you do not use, you're saying, what part is not true? You don't push out inflammatory, controversial content because you know that heightens engagement? We do the opposite, in fact. And if you look in our Transparency Center, you can actually see that we demote, meaning we reduce the visibility of engagement bait, clickbait. And why would we do that? One big reason is because for the long-term health of our services, we want people to have a good experience. We want them to want to continue to come back to these sites and connect with the people they care about for years to come. Do but you, my background do you oh, hold on, I have a question about that. Do you deny that teenage girls are not having a good experience on Instagram? The majority of young people on Instagram are having a good experience, and that is borne out by the documents that were stolen, including the Instagram youth survey of about 40 Instagram users these were teens who were already struggling with mental health issues and on all of the issues the majority of boys and girls said that instagram either makes things better or doesn't have a material impact on their experience now look i, I so hold on hold on i just want to be clear you're so hold on, on just one thing i'd let so, you say your piece you're saying that you do not have internal research that shows that depression and suicidal thoughts go up for teenage girls, as do thoughts of eating disorders. I'm saying that for the majority of teens on Instagram and the survey that, that the stolen survey that was uh, shared in the testimony shows that the majority of teens, this was a very small survey, this is not peer reviewed research, but that mm -hmm. survey has been mischaracterized significantly because of what it actually says, and we've published it, and people can go look at it for themselves, on the 12 issues for these teens who were already struggling with mental health issues, Instagram, the majority of them said, Instagram either makes things better or it doesn't have a material impact. How about now, the minority? I, How about the minority, the 13% that said that it increased suicidal thoughts? This, it's important for me to say that I spent my career as a criminal prosecutor and worked a lot on child safety. So even one teenager having a bad experience on Instagram is too many. And I can tell you that the hundreds of people at Facebook who actually do work on child safety, this former employee does not, uh, did not, but those who do work on child safety and work with dozens of external academics and child safety mm -hmm. experts, this is our top priority. And yes. not only are we doing this research and asking the hard questions, we are also using that research to inform the way we build our products. Okay, so, if so you have you found any research that where girls platform, say that it has increased it suicidal tendencies? Life. Any research whatsoever, have you seen that? If, if I can just finish, we, some of the tools we've built, we hide like counts for teens using Instagram. We connect them. If somebody's searching for eating disorder related terms, we connect them with wellness resources. We give them tools to prevent bullying and harassment. That's the result of us asking these hard questions and doing this research. And we're okay. going to continue. To okay, let me just tell you what Frances Hagen said on 60 Minutes. She said Facebook's own research says as these young women begin to consume this eating disorder content, they get more and more depressed. It actually makes them use the app more. So they end up in this feedback cycle where they hate their bodies more. Facebook's own research says it is not just that Instagram is dangerous for teenagers, it harms teenagers. It's distinctly worse than other social media. Do you deny that that research exists? There are, there's research we put out. In fact, we put out more than 400 research papers that we've participated in or, or released ourselves in the past year alone. And there is this survey that is not the same thing as peer-reviewed research, but uh, has nevertheless, we've, we've published this as well. That survey has been mischaracterized. So am I saying everybody has a great experience? No, but what that survey says is that the majority of teens who were surveyed, it's a small number, who are struggling with these issues, for the majority of them it made things better or didn't have mm -hmm. material change. Now we need to do better for um, those who are having a bad experience, but that's exactly why we do this kind of research. We're asking, okay. why would we ask these tough questions if we didn't care? We're asking because we care.
On a bigger, uh, on a bigger issue, what about democracy? Does Facebook take any responsibility for what happened on January 6th, since it allowed the big election lie propagated by Donald Trump to proliferate on the site? The responsibility for January 6th, I, I can't be more clear about this than to say the responsibility for January 6th lies with those who broke the law and those in politics and elsewhere who incited them. And the work that we did, both before the election and all the way through January 6th, partnering with academics and researchers, uh, working closely with law enforcement and electoral authorities to understand what the risks were mm -hmm. and to put safety measures in place that, that started before the election, well before the election, and continued through March. That was a work that I'm very proud to have been a part of. I've, I've frankly yeah. never seen um, you know, such an effort to prepare for an election. And I'm but, proud but then of why done. did you dissolve the civic integrity department, which worked on misinformation before January 6th? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't dissolve that team. Uh, what we did was build a bigger team that that team became a part of. And in part, that's because over the past few years, with COVID, uh, with the election, with other matters that we had teams working on individually, we were learning about things like how to use uh, informational labels on content, how to build informational centers. And we wanted to be able to leverage the things that these teams were learning and put them all in, in on one team to work together. So we've actually expanded the number of people who are working mm -hmm. on these issues. Well, why doesn't Facebook allow more transparency to allow more regulators to see how the algorithms function? We are the most transparent company in the industry. We started the practice of releasing public reports about how we are enforcing our policies. Uh, we have built a transparency center we launched this year where you can see our content demotions. We launched an independent oversight board mm -hmm. and we respond to them. Their opinions are transparent. Our responses mm -hmm. are, are publicly available. And most importantly, we've said for more than two and a half years that we don't think we should be making these decisions on our own. We would welcome government regulation. We've been talking to regulators. We welcome those conversations. Yeah. We regulators I, at Facebook I, to see the work that we're doing I, I, and we'll continue. I do want to get to what the solution is, but first let me just show you, play for you, um, how Francis Hagen says you are much less transparent than other social media. Listen to this. At other large tech companies like Google, any independent researcher can download from the internet the company's search results and write papers about what they find. And they do. But Facebook hides behind walls that keeps researchers and regulators from understanding the true dynamics of their system. Facebook will tell you privacy means they can't give you data. This is not true. Do you keep some of the visibility from regulators? You know, I, I want to I want to first answer the uh, the point about uh, researchers. We actually partner with hundreds of researchers. We put out thousands of peer-reviewed research articles that we part, our researchers have participated in, in in the past several years. So this is something we care a lot about. With election 2020, we are working with 17 independent researchers who um, have access to data, and of course we have to make sure that's privacy protected, but they have access to the relevant data mm -hmm. so that they can do work and independently put out their assessment um, of these issues on our platform. So this is something we care deeply about. So, so Ms. Pickard, if, if there's no problem, if you're doing everything great, why are you asking for more regulation? I think the first step in regulation is getting transparency from the entire industry, and then we can actually see um, you know, how, how different companies are doing and what is possible in terms of making a better experience for the public. I think it's important, and, and our, our uh, leadership in this company, including Mark Zuckerberg, have called for this regulation because we think these are important decisions that we shouldn't be deciding for ourselves. But what can Government Facebook do better? There's a, there are a lot of things that we can do better, and that can be said for, for every company out there, of course, but one thing we want to do better is make sure that our enforcement systems are uh, keeping people informed about the decisions we're making, that we're telling them clearly what our policies are, why we're making the decisions we're making. We also want to get better at finding content that violates those policies. And that's why we publish our community standard enforcement reports. Mm -hmm. We've done this since 2017, where you can actually see the progress we're making over time. Yeah, not I mean, the whistleblower says that, that removed, the stuff that you publish is not stuff. really the looking under the hood stuff. I mean, she's saying that the innocuous stuff 
you publish, but you're not publishing really how the algorithms operate and really what people need to know in terms of the controversial and most inflammatory content. That's what's getting people so ginned up and how different algorithms prey on different people's confirmation bias. That's what's happening is that you get the, the positive reinforcement. You get that reward center that lights up because you're fed content that reinforces and some would say hardens your belief system. Is that not what's happening? On the contrary. And, and look, let's talk about uh, first with our algorithm what we do to counter polarization. And, and let's be clear, people can opt out of the algorithm. The algorithm is a way of ranking the content that people have chosen to follow from families and friends and groups and pages. But if you want to see posts in chronological, reverse chronological order, you can. But since we're talking about the algorithm and, and potential for polarization, we publish in our Transparency Center the content that we demote, meaning reduce the distribution of. And that includes engagement bait, clip bait, mm -hmm. because we want people to have a good experience on this service. And I just want to say, if it, I, I understand the temptation to blame polarization on this industry, but if you look, the research is very clear that polarization in this country has been going up for decades before social media even existed. And if you look at other Western democracies, I suppose I mean the, the research that I've the research that I've seen down. is that when social media got popular, polarization got worse. And I think that there are loads of research that suggests that also. But Monica Bickert, we appreciate you coming on. I know you have to go. Um, I could talk to you for much longer about how you plan to have what you're asking Congress for and how you plan to regulate. But this is the start of a conversation, and we appreciate your time.